This is the video for the pennies game. Here in the blue notebooks it says, maximize the probability that sequence B will come first. First, A picks one from 16 possible sequences of four outcomes of heads and tails. Then B picks a different sequence. Well, down here we see under A, we see all the 16 possibilities. And here at the top it says A picked head, head, tail, tail. And here we see B, the 16 possibilities, and the one that was clicked on was head, 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 tail. A coin is flipped until the last four outcomes match one of the two picked sequences. You are player B. Here is player B. Click the sequence in the green column for player A. Click the sequence in the blue column for player B. Between the two columns is the value for the expected number of flips for each of the 16 sequences. Now this was done using random numbers, but here it says four heads in a row. The expected time for that is 26.2 flips. And here you see all the other expecteds. For the first sequence, 26 flips. Well, to get four heads in a row, the expected number of flips is 26.2. Uh, it says go to next. A Markov transition matrix is used to calculate the expected winner of the game. And down here is the Markov transition matrix. Each row of the matrix represents one of the 16 sequences. The states are, well, four heads to four tails. This first row is for four heads. The last row at the bottom here is for four tails. It will go up one state for head and down one state for tail. If it is at the top or bottom, it remains in that state. That is, if you have four heads in this example here, it's a 50% chance that next time you have four heads again. There was another head. You had three heads, another head, still four heads. But there's a 50% chance that you're going to go down one and you're going to have three heads and one tail. That's the second position. See, right here you see that. The state picked by each player has only one possibility. It must remain in that state. And here you will see the second state has a one in it. That means it's going to stay there. And that was this one, H-H-H-T. And the other one is the fourth one, which was H-H-T-T. Once that sequence comes up, the game is over. So you stay in that state. As the transition matrix is raised to higher powers, that is more flips, the player's column will reach a steady state. Well, right now we haven't had any flips, but let's put down here that we want 50 flips. Now I said 50 flips. Now we see a steady state. That is the numbers in the columns have become equal. That is, it doesn't matter where you started from, here's where you're going to finish. And it says that 33.3% of the time, A is going to finish. But 66.6% .6 of the time, B is going to be found first. If the sum of their columns is not greater than 0.994, which is 99%, 0.4% of the possibilities, it will request a higher power, more flips. Well, we're already up to 50 flips here. 
and we see that it definitely is in a steady state at this point. All right, we go to next. Player B has an advantage over player A. You can test to see which pick player B should make. All right, we go to the list here. Player B picked head, 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 tail. Well, what if he would have picked four heads. Well, we'll click there. Whoa, now he doesn't win. It's not likely he's going to get four heads is going to come before heads, head, tails, tails. Or he could pick the second one here, which is the one that he did pick. Head, 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 tail. Then he wins 60.6% of the time. Player B has an advantage because he picks second. The values in the transition matrix are shown with alpha notation for powers of 10. This allows the columns to be of equal width. Click on the green box upper right for examples of alpha notation. First, we'll look at these columns. Notice they're all of the same width. They have three digits followed by a letter, in this case here, C, meaning that there's really three decimal places. This is 0.666. Well, we'll click on the alpha notation box. And here it says, letters of the alphabet are used to represent the powers of 10. Here, 1, 2, 3, 4 with a C is really 1.234. And with a B, it's 12.34. With an A, it's 123.4. And if there's no letter at all, it is 1234. On the other hand, if it's a capital C, it means it's followed by three zeros. And a B, two zeros. An A, one zero and nothing, no zeros. Lowercase letters, minus powers of 10. Uppercase letters, plus powers of 10. And over here's a list of the alphabet. A, power minus 1, all the way down to C, power minus 26. Capital A, power of 1. Capital Z, to the power of 26. Now I'm going to return, and here it says, this is Penny's Game, which is named after its first inventor, Walter Penny. It's a binary head-tail sequence generating game. All right, now this is the information about the Penny's Game. Now we're going to look at the program that runs the Penny's Game. We click on Program here in the red stripe. Here on the left are the instructions in the main program of the Penny's Game. Over here on the right in these blue boxes, it's execute the application, save it, create a new one, create a new subprogram, and the rest of these blue boxes are for copying instructions from one program to another or one application to another. Below that here are the names of the different programs, the main program, and the first subprogram displays the selections and picks them, and so forth. Down below that are these blue boxes, which have tools to use to create programs in this P code. It's uh, listing the values, the text, the comments, captions, showing the values in registers and variables, explaining what control registers are used for, ASCII and colors, and so forth. Below that, there's a, a list of YouTube videos that will show you how to create an application all the way to making an HTML file for the application. Below that, there's an app you can run that will show you how the different actions of the P code work. Here you'll see the main program has a column of actions. This video will explain about those actions. Below that, there's a list of the 
HTML5 P code YouTube videos that explain how to use the P code. Making instructions and names and listing values, ASCII's and colors and fonts. YouTube videos about this P code. Now we're going to return to the application and execute it. Here it is. Now below it, it first says here, you can start an app and the letters A through T. If you went to program where we just were and made changes to this program, you could save it to one of these letters. Remember one of the blue boxes said to save the application and it would be to one of these letters. Then you can run your version of this application. Then below that is a list of HTML5 P code apps. This is just some of them. There's more than you can see right here. So you can go to those to see other applications in this P code. Alright, this is the end of the video for the Penny's Game.